Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the opportunity I have to present the project that I was carrying uh, together with uh, uh, the documentation group, uh, which is um, uh, to uh, have the user guides uh, migrated to web pages and to create a sort of a LibreOffice bookshelf that uh, Timothy just uh, mentioned quickly before. And um, and uh, that's it, yes. So essentially, uh, who am I? Uh, I'm Olivier Allo. I am uh, the document coordinator inside the Document Foundation. Uh, I have been involved with, uh, with LibreOffice uh, since the very beginning, uh, 2010 and then 2000, uh, and even before, because I joined uh, openoffice.org. And uh, yes, I live in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, uh, it's an opportunity for for uh, work to with this nice software. Uh, what is uh, the proposal? Is to first to talk about the LibreOffice guide, uh, which is a collection of uh, several books. Uh, the need of an online reading of this uh, kind of bookshelf. Uh, uh, the issues that I have faced in transforming the ODT uh, files and chapters into a, what I call a web output, not a file migration, and uh, explain but that is much more than pure file export. Um, how do I achieve the web display of the guides and how to get these outputs and the resulting of these outputs? So essentially, uh, the LibreOffice guides that we have are true, uh, true assets. I mean, it's, it's very high quality information. There is a lot of savvy uh, tricks for the users. There is uh, the do's and don'ts uh, of uh, handling uh, Office documents. It's available in PDF and ODT format. It's also available as a printed book. Uh, we have a team uh, upstream of about 10 people working actively uh, to update and upgrade the, the guides. Uh, the idea is to have uh, one person that coordinates uh, uh, one of the guides. So we have uh, someone that coordinates the calc guide, another one coordinates the writer guide, the impress guide, and such and such and such. And the community uh, uh, works on the chapters, uh, uh, picks the uh, changes, uh, review the contents, sometimes update the images and uh, the steps to execute the uh, given uh, task. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a true asset of the community because um, a software that is, has no documentation, uh, in my point of view, is a lesser software. So if you are going to implement or you want to use a software as complex as an office uh, suite, then uh, you need absolutely to have uh, the right documentation. So I think that we can do more. I think that we can uh, have not only this uh, PDF and ODT format, but also the online reading. Uh, I call that the online reading a way to display in your browser. So we want to have these guides in HTML format uh, for easy access from the browser. You point to a given page and then you, you get your information. Uh, something that is quick to search in the page and also perhaps uh, in the, the web and also uh, to be able to display in several uh, form factors, the desktop, tablets, eventually your mobile, when you are eventually uh, commuting in your subway, you may want to have a read on a given task on uh, pivot tables in the calc guide, for example, it's up to you. And uh, we also think that the online reading is a companion product for migration projects. Uh, clearly, I uh, have been involved into very large migration projects, and I can tell you that uh, you just don't throw the software on the table, on the desktop of the user. You absolutely need to give him uh, and her uh, information on how to use the software, because it's absolutely not trivial to change the uh, 
uh, way people are working. And we know that besides the fact that uh, LibreOffice and the competition uh, do the, produce the same results, the way to achieve the results are different. And this has to be documented. And documentation in this case is absolutely fundamental. Uh, the LibreOffice Bookshelf idea is an idea to collect all the user guides into a given uh, uh, online uh, pay web pages, use the browser to display the web pages, update the online with the newest guides, preserve the content of the guides, and be able to deploy in corporate intranets, government uh, uh, offices, school, colleges, libraries, whatever you want you get these sets of guides uh, quickly and easily deployable, right? Very good. So uh, what happens is that transforming uh, the ODT files into HTML is not straightforward. Uh, the ODT and PDF are good formats for books uh, with pages to live through. So you just uh, uh, leave the pages, uh, uh, page one, page 20, etc. Uh, but it's not that good for browsers. So browsers doesn't have, don't have the concept of page. Uh, the reading is through a continuous scrolling. You know that because you, if you read the text in, in your tablet, you probably will have to scroll. And there is an under-exploitation of the modern browsers uh, web resources. So navigation, hyperlink, search, things that can um, show in a different way that turns out the uh, reading experience better uh, in this uh, technology, in modern technology than currently uh, the old fashioned uh, books and guides right on paper. So changing the formats uh, from ODT to HTML is the least of the problem. That's the easiest part. The real problem is refactoring the pag pagination. So change the way the information is displayed on your browser. So, so what we have to give an example is that this is the sequence of uh, important parts that we have inside a chapter of our actual uh, user guides. We have the, on the top, on the very top, you have the logo, then follow it by the guide name, then the chapter title and subtitle, then we have a section on copyrights, the table of contents of the chapters and the contents then of the chapter itself. So this has to be changed and we have to executes a change. So I'm showing here uh, a typical chapter of uh, the LibreOffice guides. Uh, we have here the logo on the top, then it is followed by the guide name, and then the title, then we have the copyright, then we have the table of contents, and finally we have what I call the display area, but it's actually the real contents of the chapter, okay? So what I have to do is we have to transform this sequence of uh, parts of your document into something that is better for the browser. So we have to shift and shuffle all these sections into others uh, display. So we have, for example, uh, the logo goes to the top left, the guide name to the top middle left, the chapter title and subtitle on the top uh, um, uh, right part, uh, the table of contents of the chapter is on the, on the left, uh, the copyright and the contents display area are put together in the middle of the reading uh, part. Okay, then we can also improve a little bit more. Uh, we added a couple of other sections in, uh, in the, the web display. Um, for the foundation, we, get, we have a donation uh, button. Uh, we can introduce the book table of contents to be able to let us jump between chapters. Uh, we put a search mechanism to uh, find the terms inside the book. Uh, this imprint is the legal imprint that we use uh, for the Document Foundation, and we have a spare 
section here that is not used on the more on, on the moment but we can of course introduce uh, other links uh, interesting for example download the pdf and such and such so this is the display that we are using at the moment and uh, let's see how it shows okay so this is the layout at the moment uh, you recognize here the table of contents on the left on the on the left we have the logo the guide uh, name the chapter name the the button for a donation this is the book uh, uh, table of contents the search uh, section and the imprint and this empty so far area that we um, and leave for further developments. So this is the layout that we are achieving. Uh, everything is crawlable. You can read it. And uh, uh, this, this is what we have so far uh, for most of the books that we have uh, available. OK. Uh, the road to this output has a strategy. Uh, the golden rule that uh, we are following is that the contents must not be changed since the publication of the guide. Even if we, if we get a typo, uh, we may or may not fix the typo. So <laughs> we uh, just don't want to go through the, 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 the content of the book. We, had, we, we want to have a, a faithful copy of the uh, publication. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a lot of manual work, but we search for an automatic export with uh, minimal manual interference, uh, it, which is uh, not always possible because there is a lot of corner case. A text document is uh, rather uh, difficult to, to um, uh, handle with uh, scripts inside uh, LibreOffice. Um, uh, whoever has already tried to uh, detect or change uh, something inside the text document knows uh, the large amount of lines of code that you need to uh, uh, write in order to just to position uh, the cursor on the text that you want to change. It's, it's rather complicated. Uh, what it is is a consequence the, by the fact that the Lib LibreOffice as a word processor is a flexible tool for text editing and it allows a lot of freedom. So you can have several ways to get the same outputs, right? Um, for example, you have direct formatting, manual object position, numbering styles, misuse. Uh, and this, for example, is one of the, uh, the things I find. Uh, the list that we use, uh, list one, the list style, name it list one, is very often uh, mimicked by uh, having the list, the, the paragraph style body text with the bullets. Of course, when you look at the PDF, the result is one, the ODT result is one, but when you put that into uh, another uh, HTML uh, approach, then it, it, uh, it messes completely, okay? Uh, the difference between the two styles is going to show up very quickly. So part of the work is to uh, carry some of the change in ODT, under LibreOffice, some of the things that we can do can do be, can be done inside LibreOffice. For example, clean up of list, clean up the direct formatting, and the second part we have to do it uh, in HTML. Uh, it's not possible to have the two in one step. It has to be in two a step. The pure export to which HTML is not enough because, uh, like I said, we need to introduce things uh, we can export to html but uh, we uh, i decided to use uh, this extension name it writer to latex or writer to html that uh, creates a more leaner and more manageable web output okay so uh, we have the extension the extension is public i'm going to talk about a little bit more uh, the first step on the cleanup of the ODT is to eliminate uh, all the direct formatting. This is a um, um, best practice that uh, all the authors and the translators uh, are um, already aware. 
that we cannot use direct formatting. Direct formatting is not good for document maintenance. Cleanup of fake lists, like I said, uh, the body text and bullets is the same as the list one, uh, visually identical, but uh, internally this is completely different. Uh, the image anchoring has to change to uh, place the images as character, uh, which also has been done. Uh, sometimes the removal of unofficial styles that that is star, that are styles that are not part of the chapter templates. Uh, some of these styles uh, were either introduced by some spurious uh, copy and paste that you bring for uh, by uh, from another source, or often uh, we have also uh, what I call the legacy uh, styles. Uh, styles that were developed for the open office times because the chapters and the books came from uh, the open office times and sometimes you you see uh, uh, spurious uh, uh, styles uh, floating around and uh, it's time to clean up uh, all these these things right the step two is to do now changes on the odf file and these changes has to be downstream uh, it cannot be a put uh, uh, upstream because it's going to change the format and the layout of the document so uh, it's not possible to uh, do this uh, uh, upstream. So, for example, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, one of the examples is to swap the image caption. Uh, image caption for a book is is uh, very well accepted to be below the image, uh, but on browsers it's better to put on top of images because of the scrolling direction. Okay. Uh, change the cross-reference, for example, if we have a figure 10, where 10 is the, is the field, we change to a figure uh, 10 uh, using uh, numbering and category, so we have more space to click uh, on the link. Okay, uh, we have to change some some of the uh, writings uh, when we have a reference of an image uh, on page 23. There is no paging in terms of uh, of uh, uh, browsers, so we put uh, we change that to uh, on instead of on page 23, we put above or below. Uh, right, so this is uh, one of the approach, and also uh, we have to change and uh, to change the the chapter template. Uh, we crafted some different uh, styles with the same name, exactly the same name, but different layouts. Uh, so uh, this new template handles the mismatch between ODT richness and the HTML limitations. Uh, ODT is much richer in terms of resources than HTML, so we have to some form of uh, uh, restrict all this uh, richness. Uh, for example, notes, tips, and warning uh, are not very well handled in HTML because they are they have graphic bullets. Uh, this is bad for the export. Uh, the tab character is is not very well understood inside uh, HTML. It doesn't make uh, much sense for them. And sometimes we do we do reformatting of the paragraph styles for the title, guide name, and headings. So these activities are are uh, very um, uh, uh, necessary. So we export to uh, HTML. Uh, you can use the export of HTML, XHTML inside LibreOffice, but you get a dense and cluttered markup and you have to then uh, do the post processing to uh, fix that. Or you have used this uh, writer to HTML extension, which is available in the extension uh, website of LibreOffice. It gives you a cleaner is export and some interesting settings that uh, we decided not to use. So we just uh, uh, try to use our best, uh, all the formatting uh, uh, generated inside the OD ODT file. Uh, the, the problem uh, is uh, that this uh, extension is, seems not to be maintained anymore, but uh, uh, so far no problems. The post-processing is needed, so uh, the export of HTML does not handle uh, modern web techniques. Uh, so, for example, we wanted to introduce the CSS grids. Uh, some techniques used for responsiveness, responsiveness of the formats. 
uh, handle better the navigation, so hyperlink, scrolling, and things like that. So we had to add just one JavaScript entry on the output and one uh, CSS entry uh, to the output. And then we work on the CSS and the JavaScript to reposition all the sections as we uh, explained it before. So this post-processing is handled by a script. It takes uh, less than uh, a fraction of a second and it reposition everything for you. Okay, so the results is that uh, we, we have all the sections displayed uh, uh, for, for example, the support LibreOffice, this uh, book uh, table of contents is handled on the JavaScript. The layout here is a grid that is handled by the CSS. So, uh, and you may recognize that uh, we try to preserve most of the formats uh, 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 of the chapter, okay? Uh, the bookshelf uh, is available uh, right now. Uh, you can look at the website uh, books.libreoffice.org. Uh, it's a very simple uh, HTML uh, static. There is absolutely no uh, server side uh, script. Uh, it's only JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Uh, you can clone in your premises if you want to install in your intranet. Uh, just clone uh, this uh, URL and everything is going to be um, uh, uh, available. You just point your website inside your uh, to this the root of this uh, file uh, of this uh, folder, and then everything is going to be available for you. And you can install in your school, your company, your library, your college, your home, uh, and uh, the, the idea is to make it available uh, as much as possible for everybody, right? So he, this is the bookshelf. Uh, you see that uh, we have already transformed quite a lot of, of these uh, uh, guides. Uh, everything is, like I said, static. Uh, you can, have, of course, develop uh, uh, for English and Portuguese. And um, uh, the, what we have is if you click on one of the guides and then you have this, uh, this uh, layout and you can just click here to download ODF or download uh, via printed copy or download PDF or read online if you want. And then you see the pages that we have uh, displayed. Right. So my special thanks to Tulio Macedo for the CSS grid. Uh, Studio works uh, in Brasilia, uh, capital of Brazil, and he's uh, skilled in terms of web uh, design and uh, um, intranets uh, for mm -hmm. the, the government that he works for. And uh, uh, he has been quite a lot of, uh, you, uh, give us uh, quite a lot of uh, nice uh, work on this grid. And this is the idea. Uh, so uh, we have now five minutes and uh, I would like to thank you for taking your time to uh, watch this presentation. Uh, like I said, uh, my uh, uh, interest, uh, and I think it's important, my vision, may I say, is that we should have as much as as uh, possible uh, documentation on LibreOffice uh, available for the people and um, uh, for any kind of uh, format, uh, uh, PDF, ODF, web. And uh, there is a lot of work to do. There is, uh, I have a vision that the web, uh, what I call the web outputs is in an important um, uh, aspect of LibreOffice that is underdeveloped, that can be eventually uh, worked in the future. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm ready for uh, questions. Thank you, Olivier. So one question in the chat. Uh, are there different web page layout in case of phone or tablet? Uh, please check in. Uh, um. OK, I am paste on the GG chat. <laughs> 
Yes, uh, there are there are some. Um, um, we, which we we use the tactic on CSS for the grids. Uh, so if you modify the size of your browser, or if you try to use in a tablet, you will see a different layouts. Uh, still, we have uh, quite uh, some work to do on that to perfect. But the idea is to make it. Uh, uh, the more automatic, pos automated possible, without uh, uh, trying to ev avoid most of uh, manual interference and uh, this. So um, uh, you, you can try uh, uh, if if you access uh, the bookshelf, you will see probably. Let me just try to show you. Um, this, this is the, I want to try to uh, uh, show my screen again. Uh, just uh, give, yes. Okay, so you see the bookshelf here. If I redimension, then probably you will see that it's going to be uh, reformatted. And uh, it's, it, you can, uh, write and, um, and read online in different shapes. So uh, take a uh, here and it's, it's, it's going to be uh, displayed differently. Okay. So this is the grid that we use. And uh, uh, this is what uh, we try to make available for different, uh, uh, different uh, formats. I hope I was able to answer you. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. And any, other, any other questions? Mm. Okay. Uh, my question, so uh, your uh, bookshelf site, uh, how uh, I, I don't so reach that bookshelf site, so how now publishing or what not? Sorry, uh, no. my question is also uh, Bookshelf site is now ready or not ready? It's it is it is uh, available. Uh, it uh -huh. is work work in progress. Uh, uh -huh. It it is uh, totally hosted inside uh, the TDF, and uh -huh. it is on Garrett. So if you want to, for example, if you want to add the Japanese book. You can mm -hmm. go directly into Garrett and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, upload in Garrett your translation, your layouts, and uh, all the documentation you want. Okay, uh, it's very simple HTML. Uh, mm -hmm. The you, you clone it on your uh, on your local machine, and you work like you do the changes and uploads, and it. And then you commit in Garrett, and this is going to be available uh, for mm -hmm. everybody. And what I do is that um, the bookshelf uh, I show to you is a, a, a copy of the of the, the Garrett part, and uh, and with uh, uh, so it's 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 a separate copy, but it's the it's a mirror of the of the Garrett. Okay, so. Uh, if you upload something right now, uh, I will issue a command to copy uh, the new th new things into the uh, live website. Hmm. So I'm I'm eager, Shinji, to upload the Japanese books. I want to upload the Japanese <laughs> books. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I will check. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so Narahiko uh, follow the question. So uh, paste. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so please, so checking the chat. Oh yes, yes. Uh, why, why is it uh, well? Uh, is it, it is redirected uh okay i see uh this perhaps because uh, uh your browser is is uh, asking it's uh, it, it it is something i need to uh see with the infrastructure people and uh, why mm -hmm. is it uh, directing to uh, documentation maybe we need to break this uh, redirection um, mm -hmm. okay. so uh Maybe putting a slash at the end uh, could uh, improve that. I can send you, uh, I, I will uh, look at uh, this uh, possibility to have these uh, uh, things uh, working for you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow on the next uh, yeah. uh, thank the you. third day. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Olivier, for so, great presentation. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.